Now that we know a little bit more about the tool that we're going to be using to evaluate the success criteria for our modules, I want to show you how you can use that tool and use the student view feature in Canvas to ensure that we're achieving the desired result. So we are going to focus specifically on this row that pertains to accessibility. We're going to go into the exemplar module in our resources Canvas course, and we're going to look for scaffolded sentence frames and sentence starters, graphic organizers, listening, listening and speaking elements. Do we have text descriptions? Is there contrast to allow for readability? All of those different things. So if you have not already done so, the student view feature in Canvas really lets us have a, an authentic view of how our work looks from the student end. Canvas has a lot of amazing features, but there are some times when there's one little thing that we haven't done and then it doesn't look the way that we expect it to. And we often get caught in class with a student saying, I don't see that paper, or this is not working the way it's supposed to work. So if we look at all of our work from a student view before we put it out in front of the students, it really helps to avoid those situations. I am now in student view, which you can find on the home page of Canvas. And I know I'm in student view because the frame of my Canvas dashboard is outlined in purple. So now all of the other menu items have disappeared because in this module, all the students can see are the home page and the modules page. So I'm going to click on modules. I'm going to find the social science module and I am going to look at day one, basic economic principles. So going back to my checklist. Do we have scaffolded sentence frames? Do we have graphic organizers? Are there listening and speaking elements? When we have images, are they supportive of the content? Are there text descriptions? All of these things. So coming back, we see, okay, so in student view, I see that my icons aren't showing up. So I know that I'm going to have to go back and fix that connection. Um, but the task to reflect is, is in bold. Then we have the questions that we want people to consider, that we want students to consider are italicized. So we have that visual discrepancy to show the students that there's something that they may need to pay attention to. Um, additionally, we will see that there are not a lot of words in the instructions. It's very straightforward. Click on this, do this, watch this video, use your notebook to write down any key points. We have videos to help people we come to an assignment. Okay, and then in this assignment, we see when you are finished turning the assignment, that is in a completely different color. Those very explicit instructions we have found from the feedback that we have gotten from students and teachers that we really need to slow down and make sure that the students understand what it is they need to do to be successful in turning in their work. So a lot of what we're seeing is that students are able to do the work, but they're not sure how to utilize Google Docs or they're not sure how to utilize Canvas. So putting these very explicit instructions into the assignment helps the student. It helps whoever's helping the student to make sure that they really explicitly understand the step by step to be successful. Looking at our next page, we have we want students to take notes in their notebook, but instead of just telling them, we have given them a visual. So they have a main idea on one side and key details on the other. And we give them a PowerPoint and a video, and we go to a discussion post. Again, when we give students a discussion post, we are giving them very explicit instructions and we are showing them an example. Okay, so submit your answer as a list of 10, matching up an example with each of its appropriate categories. So we have a visual, we have instructions in bright blue for submitting their answer and then for what they need to go back and do afterwards. Okay, so all of these things are aligning with our principles. We have contrast, we have images that support the content, we have um, graphic organizers. If we click on these videos, we're going to see uh, transcripts. So all of those things allow us to check off the um, accessibility. 
this writing assignment, you can either type your answers into the document or type them on a piece of paper and upload an image. Again, providing these options for submission allows every student access to show you what they know and what they can do and does not create a barrier with technology. So I, as a designer or as the facilitator who was reviewing this design, would say that the best practices and the must do's for modules designed with accessibility for diverse learners have been carried out.